Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for being here this morning. I'm Paul Peterson. I'm an Illinois physician. I'm the president of the Illinois State Medical Society. We're here today to introduce legislation to reform prior authorization. Prior authorization is a process by which insurance companies look over the shoulder of patients and physicians to determine whether or not they're going to pay for the medications, the tests, the treatments that you and your physician-led team have already agreed upon. It was initially introduced as a quality assurance initiative, but it's become a cost reduction and care delaying process. But your care can't wait. In 2019, ISMS polled member physicians, and more than 90% of those physicians said that prior authorization was their number one concern. Physician offices spend hours on the phone waiting for insurance company representatives. When they finally get through, they give information about the patient, policy number, what test, treatment, medication they're looking for, and their fax number. And the representative usually says, thanks, I'll fax you the forms. Now, faxing things in this day and age is a little outmoded, but that's usually the process. If it comes to the right fax number, we, sell, we fill out the same information that we just gave. And then we fax it back. Hopefully the fax machine back at the insurance company has paper in it. Hopefully it's turned on. Hopefully it doesn't get mixed up in a whole bunch of other paper. Then a decision is rendered. If the decision is negative, in other words, not accepted, you're offered a peer-to-peer -peer review. Now, I'm a physician. I come from, my wife's a nurse, my daughter's a nurse, my mom was a nurse, so I come from a nursing family. But in this instance, a highly trained subspecialist may well be talking with a nurse or a pharmacist about why they want that person on this medication, this particular test, or this particular treatment. That's not peer-to-peer -to, -peer to me. If that pharmacist or nurse says, no, we're not, still not uh, okay and uh, okaying this, you're offered another time. Maybe you can talk with a physician at that point. That physician most likely is not of the same subspecialty that those physicians requesting are. The process is cumbersome confusing and inconsistent, and your care can't wait. It is my honor to stand in, up with this group of people to be able to present and introduce the legislation, House Bill 5100 and Senate Bill 3822, that will become known as the Prior Authorization Reform Act. They're going to speak and they're going to talk about things. But first, I'd like to introduce a very brave young woman who's had a not very positive experience with uh, 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 prior authorization. I'm going to introduce Ms. Isabella McKenna. Isabella, tell us a little bit about what happened. Can you spell both of your first name and last name, please? I-S-A-B-E-L-L-A-M-C-K-E-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Good morning, everyone. My name is Isabella McKenna. It is an honor to speak before you today. I would like to thank the Illinois State Medical Society and the Arthritis Foundation for this opportunity, as well as the legislators in attendance for introducing and carrying this important legislation. When I was 14, my knees swelled to the point I was unable to walk. 
It soon became apparent I had developed arthritis. During the steps to diagnose my juvenile idiopathic arthritis, or JIA, my rheumatologist determined I needed an MRI after seeing the x-rays of my knees. We waited weeks for our insurance to grant prior authorization, all the while I could not walk. We had excellent insurance and had never experienced this pushback before. Our insurance company denied the MRI request and instead approved of further x-rays. After weeks of waiting and an attempt by my doctor to avoid the excess radiation of a myriad of x-rays, I had the x-rays taken of nearly every joint in my body. Finally, we could begin treatment. I had spent weeks unable to walk, weeks in horrible pain, yet unable to receive treatment, all because I could got, not get prior authorization from my insurance company in a reasonable time frame. My father had to make countless phone calls. My doctor had to take the time to give them reason after reason why I needed this test. And in the end, they, the insurance company, not my doctor, decided it was unnecessary. When my older sister was 16, after years of shoulder pain, her rheumatologist ordered an MRI. The insurance company insisted she didn't need one. They required an x-ray first, so she got one. Still no prior authorization. The doctor revised the order. Still no prior authorization. She was in pain and there was nothing anyone could do until they saw an MRI. It took over three months to be granted prior authorization for an MRI of her shoulder. Waiting months for prior authorization affected the care she received from her doctors. This should have been viewed as unacceptable, but instead it was seen as a normal and expected occurrence. When I was 15, I needed IVIG infusions for my hypogamma globulinemia. We received prior authorization and began treatment. Four months later, the prior authorization was revoked. We were billed thousands of dollars. I ask you, how could we be billed for something they had said was covered? How could the prior authorization status change after treatment was already underway? When I was 16, my rheumatologist started me on methotrexate injections. My nurse had to work towards getting prior authorization for my insurance company for months. She told us fighting insurance companies for prior authorization on medications patients so desperately need is a main part of her job. Meanwhile, I met, went months with my JIA uncontrolled, causing me pain and mobility issues. I needed a medication that could help me walk unaided and live with less pain. I was walking with a cane and could barely hold a pencil yet it took months for prior authorization. When I was 17, my rheumatologist suggested I try a biologic and the prior authorization started all over again. When my father retired, we were required to get prior authorization again for all my medications, even though our insurance had not changed. There was nothing we could do but wait weeks for the approval to come through. This caused me to miss doses of medications I needed, some of which you are not supposed to start and stop. I am now 20 years old and ask you once again, why must it take months to receive medications one needs? Why must it take weeks to have a test to begin treatment? Why are families being billed as a result of prior authorization being revoked? Why is the current prior authorization process getting in the way of my care? Thank you for your time and consideration. It's my pleasure to introduce a few folks uh, who are going to be sponsoring this, uh, these bills. Uh, the first to speak is House Majority Leader Greg Harris. Yeah, you know, thanks, Doctor, and uh, yeah, thanks, Isabella. You know, for really illuminating one of the problems that we're trying so hard to solve here. And I think each of us who are legislators, whether from the city, the suburbs, you know, downstate, central Illinois, we see folks coming into our office every day. This is one of the most common complaints we get of people who are coming in because either they or a member of their family or a child are having care delayed or denied because of the prior authorization process. And this is not just in private insurance, it's in our Medicaid and MCO programs as well. It's a process, uh, prior authorization and utilization review that you know, started out as a good idea and there, there are many good aspects to it, but over time this has become overused and now abused and is used, uh, in, in my view and many others, as a tactic that places barriers to people getting the care they need, it causes delays, and it causes denials. Uh, and this is not just, you know, a, a patient-centered issue where, you know, people are at their wit's end trying to get a drug that their child needs. But for a lot of families, you know, where, where bo both parents are working, just the, the time that it takes to take off your job 
and go through the 800 numbers and go through the process on the phone over and over and over again for uh, one of these prescriptions or one of these tests. It's a huge financial hardship on the family, causes all kinds of tension. And for the doctors, there are some recent uh, uh, studies out that for doctors and other providers, 20 percent, an average of 20 percent of all physician time right now is used nationally on just doing paperwork for insurance companies. So when you talk about the rising cost of health care and waste, fraud, and abuse in the system, using 20 percent of a health care professional's time to do and redo and submit and resubmit paperwork is one way we can cut down. The cost of the economy of that each year is estimated to be one half a trillion dollars. That's about $496 billion in one study. So, you know, we're here to reform this. We're here to make it sensible. We're here to make it workable for the insurers, for the pharmacies, for the doctors and the hospitals. But most of all, we're here to knock down barriers and make this workable for the families of Illinois. And I really want to thank the Medical Society and my colleagues who you know, are going to be in this fight with me. So thanks. Senator Linda Holmes. Oops. Thank you so much. I am Assistant Majority Leader in the Senate. I represent the 42nd District, which is Aurora-Naperville area. Um, I'm here today to help patients like Isabella and a myriad of others as they need to obtain the care they need when they need it. So I'm sponsoring Senate Bill 3822 to break down the unnecessary obstacles that healthcare professionals run into every day when they're trying to secure medically necessary care for their patients. The purpose of these bills is to make sure that the prior authorization requirements that are utilized by healthcare insurance entities works as intended. It does sort of identify the outliers, which are healthcare professionals who bill excessively for certain treatment or treatments that are not considered appropriate standard of care. Unfortunately, after talking with physicians and patients, it's clear that these requirements are not being used for that purpose. Prior authorization requirements are applied excessively on important medical treatments and tests, even the most common medically necessary services. This is an issue that impacts all patients. Whether it's a child being treated for asthma, a pregnant mom in need of an ultrasound, a senior in need of stress test, or a patient with a new cancer diagnosis, medical care is being interrupted and delayed. And these delays can cause the condition to worsen and, of course, the anxiety and the physical pain that the patients are going through is intolerable. So we need to change this. Healthcare professionals need to know what's being subjected to prior authorization. And patients need to know that their medical needs will receive the necessary care, most importantly, in a timely manner. And health insurers entities need to be held accountable when they don't deliver the promises they made. So I look forward to working with my colleagues. This is an extremely important issue. I'm happy to take any questions. And on a personal note, I will say somebody who has been diagnosed with MS for over 30 years now, I understand the need for getting the authorized medical care that your physician, not somebody that's reviewing documents that doesn't have this medical knowledge, has prescribed and said that you need to maintain your best possible health. So thank you so much for listening. This is an extremely important issue, and I'm proud to be sponsoring this bill. Senator DeWitt. Thank you, Doctor. Good morning. Uh, Donald DeWitt, uh, Illinois Senate District 33, Kane County, McHenry County, and the western suburbs. Um, I was intrigued when I was approached about co-sponsoring this legislation, and I'm happy to be uh, joining Leader Holmes uh, in the Senate um, to sponsor this bill. Um, as a licensed benefits producer for the last nine years here in the state of Illinois, I'd like to think I've seen kind of both sides of this equation, uh, not only as an insurance agent on one side, but as a medical patient on the other. Um, the horror stories um, we hear regularly. Uh, folks with cardiac issues who wait for 10 days for approval for a cardiac test and have a heart attack in the meantime. 
folks waiting for serious cancer surgery, having their procedures approved, but waiting because anesthesia has not been approved yet. Um, it's not an efficient way, as Leader Harris mentioned, it's not an efficient way to run a system, and the waste that goes into that bureaucracy uh, just costs everyone more money in the process. Um, one final note I want to add, this legislation will not eliminate prior authorizations. I'm sure we're going to be engaged in a lot of conversations with insurance carriers as part of this process. Uh, but we want to make sure that the system that is in place is efficient, that is working in the best interest of patients in the state of Illinois, and most importantly, works efficiently to make the medical procedure process more efficient and cost saving uh, here in the state of Illinois. I'm proud to be uh, co-sponsoring this bill in the Senate. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Representative Demmer. Hi, good morning. I'm Representative Tom Demmer from Dixon. Um, I'm glad to stand with my colleagues from both sides of the aisle today to talk about the importance of reforming prior authorizations. When we try to make good public policy in health care, I think it's important that we think of the big picture and we think of the whole patient. I think all too often in the current world of prior authorizations, they seem to be focused on only one aspect of a patient's care and really prioritizing, in some cases, the short-term financial impact over the long-term impact on a person's health and a person's care. Again, as, as Senator DeWitt mentioned, this is not uh, banning prior authorizations. Instead, it's bringing much-needed transparency to which conditions, which procedures require prior authorization, by what means will those be judged, What's the, the opportunity for a clinician to make an appeal and talk to a like provider who understands the, the, the treatment that's being prescribed for that patient? We need to incentivize uh, providers to think about how they can care for a patient uh, with all the, the needs and with all the, the requirements that patient has and not be tied up in one specific paper, piece of paperwork or one specific form that has to be filed in order to get a much needed part of their care uh, approved and passed. Our savings in the healthcare system can come from an efficient, coordinated team who are thinking about all the needs of a patient and not a team who's uh, spending 20 percent of their time on paperwork or trying to jump through hurdles that they don't know exist from one insurer to the other. So again, I'm, I'm proud to uh, stand with uh, bipartisan co-sponsors of this prior authorization reform as a way to make some meaningful steps in providing a more coordinated and more efficient health care system across the state. Thank you. Thank you. We have a large group of folks who are here as, as supporters. One of those is from Threshold. Uh, Heather O'Donnell uh, is here, and I'd like to ask her to speak from the mental health point of view, uh, if you would, please. Thank you. My name is Heather O'Donnell. Uh, I am the Senior Vice President of Public Policy and Advo Advocacy from Thresholds, and we treat people with serious mental illnesses. Prior authorizations have just become automatic requirements to receiving care and medications. And oftentimes people with mental health conditions who have chronic lifelong conditions, they have to have prior authorizations for medications that they've been on for years and years that it took them many years to stabilize on. Uh, and when you have a prior authorization that is denied for medications, people's mental health conditions deteriorate, uh, they have unimaginable symptoms, and they return to the circumstances that they were in for a long time before they were able to get effective treatment. Uh, this bill will bring logic back into the prior authorization process and take barriers out of the way uh, for people who need mental health treatment. Uh, we have a long-standing mental health crisis in this state. Suicide is a leading cause of death for young people, uh, and that is unconscionable. We need to make sure that treatment, access to treatment for mental health conditions uh, is unobstructed, and we need more common sense insurance practices in place uh, to protect patients and make sure that they get the care that they need. So thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Andre Tepetti. I am the state representative from the southwest side of Chicago, the 32nd district. 
I bring a unique perspective to this particular issue. I come from a medical family. Uh, my father is a retired neurosurgeon who spent his life um, treating um, people that need support and help in the Inglewood community. My sister is an RN, my brother-in-law is an ER doc. So these are the issues that I've been hearing about for quite some time. Physicians go to medical school for one reason and one reason only primarily, and that's to care for the sick, to look out for our most vulnerable people and provide them with the medical care and treatment that they need then and there. So it's time for us to reform this actual process, reform this process in a manner in which physicians are treating their patients, not the insurance companies. We have a variety of other folks that are here, and I'll ask if you have some uh, short notes, because I want to leave a, a little time for Q&A if, uh, if it's necessary. Sue? Sure. You know, I have an opportunity <laughs> yeah, yeah. for a microphone. <laughs> Hi, I am Sue Clark. Um, I am a lobbyist here in Springfield, and I am representing the uh, Illinois Society for Advanced Practice Nursing, the a American Nurses Association of Illinois, and the Illinois Association of Behavioral Health. All of those clients of mine are 100% supportive of, of this proposal. Um, I guess the one thing I'd like to leave you with is that nurses and physicians work closely together when it comes to providing safe quality health care. Um, nurses are having the same issues as the physicians as far as the delay in treatments and what have you, and we look forward to remedying this situation. Thank you. Hello, Shana Cruz with the American Cancer Society. Uh, would like just to echo all the remarks made previously that we wanna ensure patients have access to care and have as few barriers as possible to receiving the treatments that their doctors are prescribing for them. Thank you so much. Other questions? That insurance sure. company was really compassionate. Said nobody ever. Uh, how are you gonna survive a possible push by the insurance lobby? I think the insurance lobby is going to talk about the federal work that is happening with this. Unfortunately, the federal work is going to only encompass Medicare and Medicare Advantage. That's probably somewhere around 20 to 30 percent of our population in Illinois. They're not going to be affected by anything the feds say. So we have to do this on our own. And it's very important that we work with each other to get this done right for the patients that we serve. Would this apply to drug formularies? Drug formularies are part of that. Certainly medications come under prior authorization in many instances. The insurance companies are going to say you're going to drive up health care costs through the roof. Um, prior authorizations, control cost, control unnecessary care, uh, promote generic drugs over How do you respond to the idea that this is going to drive up health care costs? Uh, actually, I think it will probably lower health care costs. I think there's a, a strong likelihood that that 20 percent of time can now be spent in taking care of people, not taking care of paper. Thank you so much for coming this morning. <laughs>